have waited a very long time to be able to put these Epicut layers into one photograph or one video as of recently because look at them and it's the evening sunlight which has a certain I don't know a je ne sais quoi hello everybody welcome back I'm just going to gawk and geek out over my Epicat layers I have several and these are from Schwerter can you believe it I was actually thinking a while ago maybe I should do a Schwerter haul video of all the ones that are doing well and or better but anyway look at them now I'm going to try and do this as carefully as I can maybe I'll just put in close-up of the pictures because it seems like the further I am away from the subject the less distortion I get and that spike of the, of the epidendrum multiforme caused with Capricornu is on the tallest cane I have ever grown. Did I just say they were all Epicat layers? Scratch that. The first two are Epicat layers. And the first one down here, you can, you can see on both of them, they have René Marquez in them. So these are René Marquez crosses, and the one in the front, get out of the sun after I've just said how gorgeous the sunlight is in the evenings. The front one is actually the René Marquez crossed with Brassavola Digbiana. Isn't that incredible? I couldn't grow a René Marquez. They didn't do well for me and I couldn't understand why. But I do love the Brassavola Digbiana as well. And I'm like, okay, I'll take that. And apart from the fact that the René Marquez does not have a frilly lip, it is a René Marquez, in my opinion. That frilly lip is clearly the Digbiana trait. But other than that, it has the lime green, the gorgeousness of a René Marquez. It did not get the fragrance from the Digbiana, so that didn't work well, did it? But it has that gorgeous, gorgeous contrast of colors, just like the René Marquez. So I am very glad that I waited long enough to see these blooms. Now I don't have to keep going after a René Marquez. And behind it is a Epicat, Epicat Lea, which is the cross of the René Marquez with Dimaranda e Marginata. Yeah, it's a mouthful. Sounds like some kind of a delicious pasta dish that should be cooking on my stove. No fragrance either. But the first blooming, I'm going to put a picture in of my first blooms of this one last year. And they had not got this pink blush. And I only had like two blooms or something. These take forever to develop as a spike. I think this spike has been on the go since early February of 2020. And we are now in at the end of May. Insane. They take forever but the beauty about these guys is it hasn't happened to me yet but if you don't cut the spike down all the way this node can become active and sprout another spike which happened over here with my Brassavola Digbiana cross oh gosh isn't that stunning ah yes because the first spike it ever this is the first bloom actually of this plant ever and the first spike as you can see up here it is actually from earlier this year that I cut off because the blooms were coming out deformed and then I did my disappointed Schwerter hall video and this one was included because it was this spike was developing and I was it was dropping very many buds which was disappointing and I thought I won't be seeing these blooms at all, ever. But here they are. Whatever was going on with her, it's done. We're over it. So I'm super, super pleased. And also, I love, love, 
love these blooms. Let me go a little bit this way and see if I can play with the sunlight a little bit. Look at that. Size-wise, there's a little bit of difference. The Miranda Imaginata cross here is a little bit taller than the Brassavola Digbiana version. But if we go up one level higher, we go up another floor, and this is the Multiforme cross with Capricornu developing its spike. I have not actually have ever grown a cane this long. This was last year's cane right here. And last year I had two growths that both matured and bloomed beautifully. Not the blooms I expected. I thought there would be like a little pink nose on white blooms like this. But they are green white, pale white. Does that even exist? Pale white? Oh well, somebody will let me know if pale white is a color. Anyway, they're pretty nonetheless, and it is a spike that now has to live in a separate location to where they used to live because of its monstrous height. I just have them in 100% LECA, my preferred setup, and self-watering. And they grow, and now they're all blooming. So I wanted to get this video in quite quickly because... I don't know how long Multiforme and Capricornu are going to take. It would have been lovely to have them all in one video, but I'm going to put this one out while I've got it and while the blooms are looking so fresh and wonderful. These are hot growers and the hotter they can get it, the better. Lots and lots of light. When the leaves go pinkish you're doing it right don't burn them I have <laughs> don't burn them but let them go sort of a pink reddish hue and they'll do just fine right now because of the blooms I actually have them in a more shadier spot in my blooming alley so I can enjoy them every time I look out of the terrace door so I hope you enjoyed this little interlude with some epidendrum crosses. I certainly appreciate you being here. And if again, if you have any questions, please, please feel free to ask away. And I'll be very, very happy to answer if I can. And if not, I'll try and find out. Take care, everybody. Thank you for being here. Bye.